Okay, yes, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about what we have been doing in, in Luxembourg. Uh, we have been doing most of the work uh, in collaboration with the uh, Luxembourgish Ministry for uh, Sustainable Development and Infrastructures. So uh, that's why Nora is also on the slide. And uh, because she has been, uh, let's say, commissioning most of the work that I present you here. Um, maybe first, who are we? Sp who is Space for Environment? We are a private company, so we are not university, we are not part of LIST, but we are a private company that has been established already now 10 years ago. We are a bunch of GIS and remote sensing experts, and we do a lot of work in uh, what you see there. The mass activities are quite central to what we are doing, uh, so mapping of ecosystems and their services. We do a lot of work in green infrastructure. We have worked with the City Biodiversity Index. In fact, we also had a project uh, with you in Lisbon. It was one of our test cities to compare what you can do from satellite images compared to what you have been doing with much more and higher resolution data. Um, we work a lot with Copernicus, so uh, in fact we are using the data and uh, Eurostat is one of our clients, but uh, the EEA also, we are part of two topic centers. We work uh, a lot with the, space, with the European Space Agency, so we, we are quite broad, but we have the idea is a little bit to bring uh, and to use space data and bring that together for, for environmental purposes. Um, we haven't seen that slide today, so I was a bit surprised. So there's no, that it, nobody talked about what is mass and uh, mapping of ecosystems and the services. So in fact, uh, we have this uh, target by 2020 to, uh, to uh, maintain and enhance ecosystem services to restore 15%, so if Lisbon is aiming at 20%, that's already quite ambitious, I would say. And uh, I mean, one of the sub-actions accompanying this, this target is that, in fact, uh, ecosystem services should have been mapped by 2014, which not many of the member states uh, managed, and that there should be some economic uh, valuation by 2020, and I think we have here some ideas how that could be done, in fact. Um, the chronology of the work, a little bit, what we have been doing in Luxembourg. There was a very first study here from uh, the Centre de Recherche Henri Tudor, now LIST, on the uh, economics of ecosystems and biodiversity in Luxembourg, so a little bit a deep study. Um, that was in 2013. Then in 14, we came into the picture and uh, the ministry basically asked us, OK, uh, we have the end of the chain, but what about the starting of the chain? I mean, we, we, we have ideas how to value ecosystem services, but we don't know where they are. So maybe, how do we approach that? So there was an idea to develop a practical guide, how to do Mars in Luxembourg. That was the first step. The second step then was to actually, with the ministry, to define a number of priority ecosystem services. We selected 13. We did the mapping of those 13 indicators. Uh, we uploaded all that information to the uh, Biodiversity Information Platform for Europe, BIES, and we have now recently a last step, which is the Natur Pact, or Pact for Nature, and I will give you a little bit of details of all those uh, that, uh, that uh, are on the list. Uh, I think you can probably explain that better than I can. Uh, this is a bit the work that has been done in-house here. Um, I think the main conclusions are we need to identify more ecosystem services because that was only focused on a, of a selection. Uh, there was a lack of information on ecosystem condition. There was a need for integration, integrating more statistical and economic data in the, in the whole process. Uh, there was the need for discussing more, so creating a working group and interdisciplinary. And there was, that's also I think one of the outputs of that study, uh, a method for ecosystem service valuation. So I think your project is a direct follow-up of, of that one. Um, when we came into the picture then, we had all these mass uh, documents. We have the common assessment framework for uh, ecosystem services. Uh, and the first step is, in fact, to map the ecosystem services. So what we did in this very first step, we created a crosswalk table between the Luxembourgish National Land Cover Database, the OBS database, and the UNIS level two classification and the MARS level two classification. Um, as I said, we did a review of the ecosystem services following the sizes classification. 
uh, and we proposed a list of relevant services for Luxembourg. So the map that you see is basically a translation of the OBS map into, in this case, the mass uh, classification. Um, the next step, the practical guide, uh, as I said, we try to identify from the list of 48 um, sizes, ecosystem services, those which are potentially of interest for Luxembourg and that are identified, that we can actually produce, that are feasible to produce. Uh, and we came up with a list um, and they were like, like you can see at the, the bottom, we identified some kind of priorities, which ones would we think are important for Luxembourg, which ones are possible to do. And then if you look at the combinations of the, uh, the, uh, the traffic light symbols, uh, you can see that in the end, I mean, this is just a subset of the, uh, the table, you can see which of the ones are actually possible and uh, which ones we can use. We tried to develop for all these ecosystem services something like a chain from capacity, ecosystem service capacity, ecosystem service flow, so what is actually consumed or provided, and what is the benefit, so who is benefiting from it, and uh, so to have this kind of uh, a chain, that was an idea that we were trying to do. Um, the first step in that project, before we actually created this chain, was to look at the condition of ecosystem services. If you remember this common assessment framework we just had uh, from Mars, first one was to map the ecosystems, now we are looking into the condition. So the idea was here again, how can we find out information about the condition, the health of ecosystem services. Um, what we did is we used some of the Luxembourgish information, we used the biotop cadaster, we used the grassland map, we used the forest map, and we used something about bird species richness. We put that in a moulinette, in a machine, in the, in the GIS, and we came up with a map like this, where you can see uh, the, the more red, in this case, uh, oh, so, yeah, the more red, the least ecosystem service condition you have, the more green, the higher the ecosystem condition is. So that was one of the outputs of the projects. Um, the ecosystem services that have been identified by the ministry are those uh, grouped into provisioning, uh, regulating, and, uh, and, and, and cultural services. And the idea was now to see how these ecosystem services are actually delivered. As I said, we had this chain, capacity flow benefit, and we tried to identify for each of uh, the ecosystem services which sort of indicator would best capture the capacity, the flow, and the benefit. Um, we had a, a, sometimes we had options. Most of the cases we did not have a lot of choice because simply based on the data availability, it was, a, it was rather limited. Um, to show you how that looks in practice, here we have uh, provision of biotic energy. Uh, as you can see, we have information of, uh, about the uh, bioenergy for, for burning, uh, how much is actually being cut for burning, and what is the cost of, uh, of, this, of this firewood, basically. This is a nice illustration. We have spatial data for all three of that. So it's, it's all at a very reasonable scale. You can compare. But what happens more often is that we have something like that. This is a little bit what we also, where we got input from the list. It's about uh, pollination. So we, we know where the beehives are. We know what is the proportion of pollinated agricultural land, but if we look at the benefit, we just know that per canton. So uh, we, we lose a little bit all the nice spatial detail that we have had in the beginning. So our, our chain, of course, gets more difficult to explain and the results are getting uh, more and more, let's say, generalized. Um, another one we were doing was recreation capacities uh, or opportunities. We looked at the length of hiking paths and these kind of things, bi uh, bicycle paths. We looked at the Flickr data, something that I just heard from <laughs> the colleague from, uh, from the Natural Capital Project. Uh, we used the same approach. And for the benefit, we tried to look into overnight stays. And you can interestingly see that uh, areas which are below the average number of days is, for example, the city of Luxembourg. 
very often because it's business travelers. They stay just for a day or two, while all in the north is much more vacation travelers, so they stay longer. And uh, so you, that, that, that was a nice illustration. And uh, so this we did for all 13 of the indicators, and as you can see here, for some of them, especially those with the red dot, we, we did not always, let's say, manage to complete the whole chain of, uh, of, of, uh, of the, uh, the discussion we wanted to present. If I conclude for that mapping exercise, we have a lot of gaps in spatial data. We would have liked to have much more spatially explicit and spatially detailed data, not only at the uh, administrative level, but really uh, at, uh, at a polygon level. Um, the assessment chain, we found out sometimes, was a bit weak. We, were, we sometimes ended up with a benefit that was not influenced by the capacity or the flow. So, I mean, if you, if you have this kind of a chain, uh, you should, of course, have also, if you look at the benefit, it should be depending on the first two. So, because if you change one of the first, you should see it in the benefit. And uh, that did not always work. So, that is something we should also ex uh, improve. The links between biodiversity and ecosystem services are not always direct. Uh, sometimes we did not know if one of the uh, indicators we had, we should put it into capacity or into flow. Um, I mean, there's a lot of conclusion. I mean, sometimes it was simply difficult to measure the ecosystem services. So how do you actually quantify some of those things? And uh, so a lot of questions, but I think the last one was an important one. We have maps. So compared, I mean, we did that study in 2014, 15. At that time, most of the countries did not have any maps. So Luxembourg did have maps for 13 indicators for 13 ecosystem services times three. So that was already quite an achievement, I think, at the time. Um, so in the last step that we are involved in at the moment, uh, it links back uh, also a bit to the presentation we just heard before we are trying to actually see how the idea of ecosystem services can be brought into the minds of municipal planning, of decision makers. So people that are working in, uh, in communal organizations, in uh, communal government, how can they may be made aware of that some of the work that they are doing is actually supporting ecosystem services and biodiversity? So we have for that set up a catalog of, of questions, of measures, where they can actually see how they are doing on a certain scale. So there's points for that. Uh, there's points on the number of Natura 2000 areas of uh, protected sites, of uh, information measures uh, of land that the, uh, the commune actually is leasing from, uh, from farmers or paying them under the biodiversity uh, contract and these kind of things. So they get points for that. And that's an idea how to bring the idea, the notion of ecosystem services much more into the minds of people that are, let's say, leading communes. And uh, so uh, that's it. So Luxembourgish activities are over. <laughs>